Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to install and run Manjaro Linux. Now, Manjaro Linux is awesome. It's based on Arch Linux, so it follows the kind of rolling release, constantly updating kind of philosophy. And due to its popularity, chances are if you do actually run into any issues, a quick Google search and you're going to find somebody who had the same issue, thus finding a solution to whatever that may be. Now with that said, actually getting Manjaro is really easy. What you're going to want to do is head over to manjaro.org and click on the try Manjaro download button in the middle of the screen. And what this is going to do is take you to a couple different downloads. Now there are going to be different editions of Manjaro featuring different desktop environments or how you're actually going to interact with your system. There's going to be XFCE, GNOME, and KDE Plasma. Now depending on your preferences and your hardware, that's how you're going to make the decision on what edition to go ahead and download. Now when it comes to these additions, there's really a lot that goes into it, but in the simplest terms, if you're doing this on an older computer without the best specs in the world, uh, the XFCE version is probably going to be your best bet. Now if you're interested in looking at something a little bit different than what you might be used to, you might, might want to consider the Manjaro GNOME edition. This is going to feature a couple different layouts that you could go ahead and easily switch in between to change how you're actually working with your system. The workspaces in GNOME is awesome. Overall, it's moderately customizable, but if you're looking for something that is really customizable and you really want to dig into the nitty gritty of things, the KDE Plasma version is awesome. There is a near endless amount of configuration options and things that you can actually change with your system. And the, the default look of this version of Manjaro looks good too. It's a fairly traditional desktop. It's really easy to use. And if you do want to learn more about these desktops, I have separate videos covering these editions of Manjaro and I'll go ahead and link to those down below. Now with that, what you're going to want to do is install Manjaro on a USB drive. And there's a couple different tools that you could go ahead and use to do that. Uh, the tool I generally use is Etcher. When it comes to the GUI and actually using Etcher, it is very easy. All you need to do is plug in your USB. And of course, make sure there's nothing on it important because flashing over the ISO or the image of Manjaro is going to wipe everything that is on it. And then in Etcher, what you're going to want to do is select the Manjaro image that you downloaded. And then the next step is to select the USB that you inserted into your computer. And then you could go ahead and begin the flashing process. Once it's done, it's going to verify that everything was flashed over properly. And then once everything's all done, you are going to have your USB of Manjaro. Now, before we go ahead and install this and wipe our Windows system, you're going to want to consider a couple things. First and foremost, make sure you back up anything that's important on your computer. Go through your documents, your videos, make sure you put everything on an external driver, back it up somewhere in the cloud. And if it's feasible for you, one thing that I would probably suggest you do is to install it on a completely different hard drive. So maybe remove your Windows hard drive, SSD, whatever, put a new one in and install it on that. So that way you could easily just reinstall your Windows drive and have your same system. You could also install this on a separate drive, two different drives in your computer and dual boot. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend dual booting Linux and Windows on the same drive. It's definitely possible and doable, but there may be some compatibility issues, especially with Windows 11 and the secure boot requirements. And before you actually do install it, I'd recommend you check out the video that I made on the things to do before you actually switch over to Linux, which I talk about changing over your workflow because you're not going to be able to get those like Adobe applications. Uh, go ahead and check all the games that you want to play because Linux has gotten a lot better recently when it comes to their native support for games, but a lot of the AAA multiplayer titles are still not going to work on Linux. So really do consider that before completely making the switch over. And now what we're going to do is actually install this on our system. Now I went ahead and flashed the GNOME version. So that's what I'm going to be installing. But the installation process for whatever edition of Manjaro you grab is going to be the same. So first things first, you're going to want to plug this into your computer and restart it. And then you're going to want to actually boot to this live USB. Now, depending on your motherboard, the key is going to be different, but you're going to want to hit something like escape, delete, F8, F12, whatever it may be to either get into your boot menu or your BIOS. If you go into the BIOS, you could change the boot order. So the USB is going to be the preference and we can boot into Manjaro. Alternatively, you just go to the boot menu and select the USB from there. And I do recommend you select UEFI in that boot menu. And then once Manjaro starts to boot up, you're going to have a screen where you can select either free and open source or NVIDIA. If you are running an AMD GPU, you could just go ahead and go with the free and open source. But if you do have a NVIDIA graphics card, 
I highly recommend you select the NVIDIA option. This will prevent a lot of issues in the future. And now that you are booted in, you're actually in a live environment. This is not installed on your system. You're running this directly off the USB, but it's at this point that you could go ahead and test general hardware compatibility and make sure most of the stuff that you're going to do works completely fine. If you're having severe graphical issues or anything like that, that is definitely gonna be something to note. But if you're in the live environment and everything seems to be working okay, we could go ahead and launch the installer. And we could do this from the Manjaro Hello application. The very last button under installation is launch installer. Now from here, you're just gonna to want to run through this setup process, selecting the options that will work best for you. For the first option, I'm gonna go ahead and select American English. And then we have our time zone. So just go ahead and click on whatever time zone you happen to be in. Next, we have keyboard layout. For me, I'm just gonna go English, US, and the default. And now from here, we're gonna go ahead and select our storage options. Now, this is where we're actually gonna end up formatting our hard drive and all that. So it's really, at this point, make sure that you've backed everything up and whatever drive you're gonna be installing Manjaro onto does not have anything that you are going to need later. So in this Manjaro installer, it says select storage and device. Make sure you select the proper device. Uh, for this, we're going to erase the entire disk, but we do have other options such as manual partitioning. Uh, if you are interested in doing things like that, I'll go ahead and link to some resources down below. But for this, we're just going to do a clean install, giving Manjaro our entire drive. Now under this, you are going to have the option to set up swap. If you have more than like four gigabytes of RAM, chances are you're not really going to need to worry about this. But swap is a way to kind of increase your RAM capacity. Uh, not nearly as efficient, but it'll definitely help out if you're somebody who does not have that much RAM. So if you do set up swap, I do recommend you do swap to file. And then next we have the file system. And for this, the first two options are perfectly fine, either ext4 or betterfs. Uh, for Manjaro, I just would recommend you stick with the default for now, unless if you really know that you want like the special snapshot features and all that within BetterFS. And then below that, you have an option to encrypt your system. If you'd like to, you could go ahead and do that. You'll just have to enter a password to unlock anything on your computer. And then the bootloader location is gonna be perfectly fine on our hard drive, because this is the only hard drive that we are gonna have in our system. And from there, we could go ahead and click next. And now from here, you can set up your user account. So go ahead and type in your full name and your login. It's gonna to have to be all lowercase with no spaces or anything like that. Now go ahead and give your computer a name. One thing I generally do is just name it the distribution or I name it Tech Hut TV if I'm uh, gonna be recording, things like that. You can name it whatever you want essentially. And then of course, pick a strong and secure password. And I do recommend you check the box that says use the same password for admin account. So then you're not juggling around two different passwords. Just makes life a little bit easier. And from there, you could go ahead and click install and you will get a dialog box asking if you are sure you'd like to do this. Um, I preface this enough. Yes, we are sure. Go ahead and click install now. And now it's beginning the installation process. This may take anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on your computer and the type of USB you're using. But when it's all done, you're gonna go ahead and reboot your system, unplug that flash drive and boot into Manjaro. And now that you are up and running, there are a couple different things you're gonna to want to do when you first boot into your system. The most obvious thing is update it. I recommend opening up the package manager, which is just add remove software or PAMAC if you wanna search it up that way and go under the updates tab and make sure your system is up to date. Now there's a lot more that you could do, including setting up backups and things like that. I will link to another video that I've done where it is the 10 things that you should probably do after you install Manjaro Linux. In addition to that, I'll go ahead and link to some additional resources that might help you out. And again, before you actually proceed with this, I do recommend you follow the steps in the video I did in preparing to switch to Linux. With all that said, I would love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.